from this. This is from some of my devotion time this week. And I always encourage us to grow daily in the Lord. And doing a daily devotion is always a good way to just kind of keep your feet to the fire. God is always willing to speak into our life. And like we see in the title today, What God Says Goes. And I don't want to tip my hand too much, but man, I'm so ready to just peel this back and share what God has been showing me. Some of these things that we've shared many times, but how many people need a reminder of who they are in Christ sometimes? Because a lot of times crisis can start picking away at you. And so I want to encourage us today as we go through the Word. I got a little, a lot of one-liners, but I got some great scriptures that you can write down, put on your refrigerator, but ultimately get in your heart, okay? So with that being said, I, I wanted to kind of back out a little bit and say, you know, I, I was talking before we came on. I'm so thankful for the opportunity with social media that we get to put the Word out and go all the way around the world and different things. Matter of fact, um, we'll be pulling this up very soon. Many of y'all know that we have two churches, Keep the Promise Churches in the Philippines, praying about the next one. Uh, Pastor Nick actually put together a really cool slideshow for us to share. So I'm going to work that into a presentation real soon. So know that what's going on here is not just right in this room. Not right just in this city, but it's all over the world. And you are a part of it. You're a huge part of it. So never get your eyes focused on something small. Just get your eyes focused on God. He's large and in charge. And I'll, I'll just like to say this. Little is much in the hand of God. So when we got our hearts right and we're moving forward, I appreciate all you guys do about prayer, about giving and everything else. So it's just a blessing. So getting back to a little social media, I want to make sure that y'all know that I think that's a good thing. However... A lot of times we have to be careful what we're feeding on, amen? So I did a couple of little, did a little couple of searches and stuff. And, and, you know, a lot of times you see, they had a thing that I read about. They call it social media uh, has just become such a, a way of life. A lot of times we feel like, oh, when we're just not measuring up. Have you all ever seen some of the posts or see some of the things on a website? Or let's even go to commercials. Do you ever see the overweight guy with the pretty girl on the beach? I don't see that, right? You always see this guy like this. You know, you know, and if you take this hair tonic, you'll get this, you know, and buy now and all these different things. And then, you know, you got the folks that got their their Instagram stuff and different things like that and their perfect life on Facebook. Right. Right. Not a wrinkle. Kids getting straight A's, everything else. Come on. <laughs> That's right. As Angela said, she calls it fake book sometimes. But what happens so many times we log in so many hours on those things, we think, wow. If my life is not like that, then I must be less. But let me tell you what. If you ever think you're less, look to that cross. It'll tell you how much you were worth. Amen. So I, I just grabbed a couple of numbers just to kind of put this in perspective. I, I like looking around and, I, and as Tanya says, I'm the pie chart guy. You know, I'm always, oh, I want to see how this is going. So average, the average login to the Facebook platform per day. Y'all ready for this? I wish Thomas was over there. Are y'all ready for this? 2.1 billion people per day log in on that. Woo! That's something, isn't it? 2.1 billion with the B people log into that. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. That's why we're putting the word out there. Now, let's just slide over to YouTube. YouTube has 30 million visitors per day. Somebody say, thank God for you too, because every time I go to work on something, I go, well, how does that go back together? Should have went on that with the dishwasher miles earlier. Shouldn't I, I should have. All right, y'all ready for this? They said daily, 5 billion YouTube videos are watched daily. 5 billion. Now, when my kid can math, I got I to start counting zeros. That's a lot. So the reason I bring that, I think that's all good stuff. But, you know, you think about how many hours are people logging in if there if that many people on there and how much are, are we allowing what they put out there, that content coming in to drive our bus. You see where I'm going with this? That's why I say what God says goes. I think there's a lot of great things that we can get out there. You know, a lot of great information. I will tell you this. How about this? How many people Google stuff when they go to the doctor? Not a good plan a lot of times. Well, before that, before that, they had a doctor's book. I used to go to sleep before I got saved reading the doctor's book. Lord knows I need Jesus. I should have been reading the word. Well, I did something to my back and this and that and all this, and I had done figured out I was going to die. 
I mean, I couldn't say the word, but I underlined it and I was like, oh, that's what I got. And as I read along, if I didn't have it, the time I got to the end of the paragraph, I start feeling it. So I get in a twitch. I'm just being honest. Y'all ever do that? And he said, you may have a slur in your voice. I said, baby, something ain't going good. I mean, this thing right here, you got to watch what you put on it. So I will, I'll come clean. I went to the doctor. I was like, I don't even know why I'm going to the doctor. I'm going to have to, at that time, I think it was a, a $10 copay. <laughs> I'm going back now. I got in there. The guy said, what'd you? I said, oh, I got this pain here. And this going on here and this and everything else. He said, well, you know, do this turn around and all this stuff. And I said, I, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. He goes, oh, really? <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> and I, I spit out this long thing. You know, I said, I don't know if I'm saying it just right, but I'm sure it's this. He goes, hmm. Do you got a doctor book at the house? I said, matter of fact, I do. He said, you might want to leave that thing shut, son. I said, what do you mean? He said, if you had what you just said, you would have been in the emergency room. You wouldn't have walked in here. I said, Whew, thank you. <laughs> but we get wrapped around that, don't we? We start reading and we start looking because it'll start transforming your mind. So how much more will the word of God start transforming your life? Come on, you see what I'm saying? If we were to read that and, and think upon those things. But there's so many things going on in the world that we feed on and we got to be so careful because, man, we can get our wires crossed sometime, can't we? And I like what Paul says. I'm going to pull this up and I got a lot more scriptures coming your way. Look at this. He says in Ephesians 3.14, he says, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father. When he's thinking, I'm going to give you a, a big version of this, and we'll start unpacking. How about when you think of all this, all the things that God has done for you? Man, don't you want to fall to you and say, Lord, thank you. Hey, just being saved and not going to hell, whoo, that's huge. Amen, Amen is right, that's right. But to, to want to work in your life now, to give you the privilege of, of, of being a, a, a bearer of light, to be, give you the privilege of sharing the gospel message, that's huge. Angels don't even get to do that. But we do. How are we doing with that job, right? How are we doing with that? But it, it, with all this confusion, voices and everything else, in the media, man, you've got to watch what you take in. There's a lot of good things, but you've got to kind of run it through the filter of God's word. You've got to run it through the filter of his word right there. Man, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind with the word of God. So I thought today, I said, you know what, after all the things that I, and I talked to a lot of people, I'll tell you, I have probably talked to, I bet you I talked to 700 people this last week. I ain't kidding. Don't ask me the names. But, but, but I've talked to a lot of people, and I love people, man. And when your name is Buddy, you think everybody knows you, but they might not know you. They say, hey, Buddy, how you doing? I go, hey, man, what's up? That's good. My wife said, who was that? I said, I don't know. She said, they knew your name. I said, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. You know, they're just being sociable. But I, I try to get to know them and, and see what's going on. And I, I just enjoy people. But I think what, what I really want to hit on today is our identity in Christ. And a lot of times we can find that we get some mistaken identity. So I'm going to unpack a few things. If you got your notes today, there's going to be a lot for us to share. Okay, so everybody doing good? I want to talk about mistaken identity. And I'm going to kind of just walk through a few of these here. We often identify with the wrong things. Can I get an amen there? Let me look at this here. If you got your Bibles, you can turn to this. I've got a lot of scriptures up here. This is 1 Peter 5, 8. And it says, stay alert. Watch out for the great enemy, the devil, who prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. Now, I think that's kind of neat that he says, just remember, you ain't, only, you ain't by yourself. Why is it in, in the world, if we're going through a tough time, it's not as tough if we're going through it with somebody else? Because I think we're made for community. I think we're made for, for, for just pulling together. But a lot of times, we can start identifying with the wrong things. A lot of times, we want to identify with the things on TV or whatever. I'm not preaching against all that. But does it line up with the Word of God? We have to watch with our children. I've mentioned this many times. You can always tell when your kids are hanging out with somebody new, right? Am I right? It's like, uh, we don't talk like that. We don't act like that. We don't do this or that. You know, and you start seeing how big an influence people can be. You have to watch your circle of impact. Sometimes you got to walk away from some people. 
I didn't say you didn't keep loving them. I didn't say that. But sometimes you got to keep them at arm length distance and just keep praying. Amen. You know, um, we had a service here for one of my buddies, a uh, mother's uh, Friday. And there were so many guys I saw that I had not seen in years. And man, it was good to see them. It was so good to see them. And many of them have given their life to Christ. And I think back of some of the crazy things we're doing. And, you know, and they go, you remember that? I got, I try not to. <laughs> I'm trying not to. But, you know, the good news is when we come to Christ for forgiveness of our sin, we turn from our sin and turn to Christ. He said, it's the finished work of the cross. I separate your sin as far as the east is to the west. Doesn't it feel good to be forgiven? Doesn't it feel good when you forgive yourself sometimes? But see, that enemy will bring that around and remind you of all these little things, all your shortcomings. I got a lot of things I'm going to roll through. We often mistake God's grace, mistake the grace of God for God's approval. Well, nothing happened this time, so I guess he's okay with it. Don't mistake God's grace for his approval. God hasn't missed anything in our life. He hasn't missed anything. God is very gracious. Allow Holy Spirit to work in our life so that we turn around and say, you know what? I've got that little nudge. Maybe I need to make some adjustments. Ooh, I got them all there. Look at that. We often make mistakes. We often mistake kindness for weakness. Anybody ever do that? Got somebody that's very kind and you think there's a pushover until you push them too far? Then it's on, isn't it? And, and you know what I found? Then you go, I can't believe that. Oh, oh, Susie, I thought she was all right. Now she's all mad or something. Or she's, she's laid the Lord down. Well, you've pushed Susie, and you pushed Susie, and you pushed Susie, and then Susie said, leave me alone. And you go, man, I tell you, I thought she was a Christian. <laughs> no, she was, she was applying grace to your account. And now she says, payday. Look, being a Christian doesn't mean being a Christian floor man. It means standing on the truth, standing for the truth. But doing our very best to turn around and respond like God. Amen. Look at this. How about this? We, we mistake the impact of sin in our life. Oh, he'll lie to you, won't he? Little won't hurt. Everybody else is doing it. And then when you jump over that line, he goes, I cannot believe you did that. Wow. You're a Christian. You did that. Oh, you did that. Anybody encouraged yet? <laughs> The good news is coming. But see, a lot of times we've got to realize where we're at and, and that you're not in it alone and that God takes us even in our sinful state because that's all we got. But we got more than enough in Christ. Let's take a look at this. We often mistake what is bad for us as being good. I told you all the story many times about I wanted to buy a truck and Denise said pray about it and I jumped up and said, you just want me to pray about it because you know God don't want me to have it. Y'all heard the story. I won't go through all of them, but that, that was the bottom line, right? And that just came out of my mouth. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, wow. But isn't it something how when we take a little bit of time and lay things before the Lord that we might get a whole different response? You know, we, we, well, we want to be quick to, to answer. The last thing on this slide here says we mistake how close Christ's return is. I'm going to let y'all think on that. How close is Christ's return? Mm -mm -mm. I share this every time. I'll never forget when Jess was little. You guys have been with me for a long time. Heard me say it every time. It's the best answer I believe that the Lord gave me. The Bible says no man knows the time or day when he's coming back. So Jesse, with his dad being a preacher, he said, Dad, you, you know, it's like most, you got the inside scoop, right? When's he coming back? I remember, you know, we were putting him in bed. We prayed. He says, I, I, I know they said nobody knows, but just tell me what you think. <laughs> Give me an estimate, Dad. And before I knew it, I believe God gave me this answer. He said, son, I don't know, but we're 24 hours closer than we were yesterday. I go, ooh, that wasn't an answer for me. We are 24 hours closer than we were yesterday. And, and, and think about this. Let me ask you a question. If right now, boom, the Lord came back and said, I'll be back at noon tomorrow. And we're all sitting here going, noon tomorrow. How would your rest of your day be different? And now here's the question. Why should it be different? You see where I'm going with that? Because we don't know if it's going to be, by the time I go, I might be going up just like that. 
are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, all right. I had a buddy one time. He said, you know what? I know we all got to go, but I just don't want to get out of line. <laughs> he said, I'm ready. When it's my turn, I don't want to go early. But you know what? When I hear things like that, that means, you know what? There's still things that we want to accomplish. What is it that God has placed in your heart, in your gifting, that he wants you to do today? See, we go, oh, we get the five-year plan, and, and if this goes right, I'll do this, and all these different things. But here's the thing. What does God want you to do today? Just, just what does he want you to do today? Hey, God, what do you want me to do with this sermon? How about that? Why don't we start? God, how do you want me to respond to this sermon? How, how do you want me to adjust my life? Every time I preach, my heart is this, that I will challenge us to grow closer to the Lord. And if we need to make adjustments, let's make adjustments. God's willing for us to make adjustments. But that's the thing that keeps me going all the time because I'm going to tell you what. I don't want nobody to go to hell. I don't want anybody to go to hell. Now, how long is eternity? It's forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Now, as a believer, we're going to live with the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But for those who have rejected Christ, the only way to heaven will live in a place called hell forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That ought to motivate us, church, to tell people, not to beat people, not to insult people, not to, to taunt people, but to love people in a way that they will hear that message and said, wow, look at what's at stake. Your soul is at stake. But the enemy wants to give you a bad case of mistaken identity. Everybody good? We'll move on. But also, we know that there's, uh, sometimes there's stolen identity, right? Let's take a look at this. And it says, the goal of the enemy is to steal the identity of the believer. Now, he can't, but he wants to mess it up for you, right? We're secure in Christ because of what Jesus Christ has done. We are sealed with his spirit. But look at this. It says, the thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and destroy. But Jesus said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. John 10, 10. Does that mean rich and satisfying life that he's going to give you to pick six numbers? That's not what he's talking about. I'm going to tell you what. The older I get, and I share this from time to time, stuff means less and less and less. I am not preaching against stuff. But I'm going to tell you what, you can take all my stuff. I'll keep Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I'll do that anytime. I, 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 you can keep all my stuff, and I'm glad my kids are saved. You can keep all my stuff. I'm glad my mama, 90 years old, knows Jesus. And one day I'll probably roll over there, and she'll be gone to see him. And that would be tough. But wouldn't it be worse if I didn't know if she didn't know Jesus? Wouldn't it be something for people to walk in this church every week? Churches all over the place. Let me tell you something. I did a little study on this. Do you know the average size church, last time I checked, was about six, eight months ago, pulled this up. The average size, size church in the United States, you know how many people it is? 80 people. Amen. 80. Eight zero. And we got the best message in the world. It costs you nothing, but it will cost you everything if you don't receive it. Amen. It will cost you everything if you don't receive it. I don't want to get there and say, buddy, why didn't you tell him? I don't want to get there and, 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 and I don't know exactly how it's going to be, but I don't want to get there and we're on a conveyor and I go, hey. We need to be about God's business. We need to be about sharing what's going on. But he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Let's take a look at a few other things here. The devil tries to steal the blessings of a child of good. Notice it says try. He wants to mess up everything we can. Oh, you don't need that. You don't want that. He wants to twist it. He wants to twist it. He wants to twist it. That's why when you center your life on the gospel message, it ain't, as, as, as just you say, ain't no big hotcakes. No big hotcakes. No big deal. Because we know what we got in Christ. And even when you're in crisis, you still got Christ, right? And that's what I hope we see today. The devil tries to steal the blessing. He'll try to, well, you know what one of the blessings is? It's peace. He'll try to steal your peace. Because he'll give you the woulda, shoulda, coulda. Right? Everybody say, what was that? Because <laughs> yeah. you know you hear it sometimes. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. You know, if you'd have done that a little better, you could have done this. Oh, if you just did, the, you know, on about your performance. Man, I'm trusting in the performance of Jesus Christ on the cross, plus nothing, nothing. And people say, man, how come you're so happy most of the time? And I am. 90 some percent of the time, 
I'll get a little swoop in there every now and then. But because I know whose I am. And like I said many times, I wouldn't pick me, man. I'm telling you, woo, I can mess it up, boy. I can do stupid stuff with zeros on the end. Just add to it. And I think about this. Mr. Trent, God loves you just the way you are. Think about that. And we love you just the way you are, too. But God loves us so much, right, that he, he refuses to leave us there. He said, come on, I got something better for you. Come on, I got something else for you. Hey, you know what? Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to plant you in a church family so you can be a blessing. And not only that, I'm going to put Brian in your life so he can look out for you. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, that's a little inside joke, but that's good. That's good. I couldn't resist. That's good. That's your right hand man, isn't it? Oh, me. We have a good time up in here. But you know what? That's what community does. That's how we pull together and we work with each other. What else is he? He's a deceiver. He's the father of all lies, man. He is a liar. He attempts to blur the vision of God's truth. It started in the garden. Did he really say that? He just don't want you to be like him. Did he really say that? Man, I always say sin doesn't have to come in a 55-gallon drum. It could come in a drop at a time. And then we say, wow, how did we get over here? But he wants to blur our vision. Isn't that it? We watch TV, different things like that. Now, let's see. If you remember watching TV in the 1960s, can you raise your hand? I didn't say that you were old. I just said, do you remember watching TV in the 1960s? <laughs> now, now, see, we still watch things at 19. We got the fire stick. We, everything we watch is like Leave it to Beaver and all that stuff. You know, we watch a few things. But, you know, Dad's going to give you the business beef. They didn't have to cuss. They didn't have to fuss. They didn't have to do all that stuff, right? But you turn around and you look at that. Now you turn on, to, have you noticed this? Most of the young programs, the kids are, I'll just say it, snotty. Talk back to the parents. Make all the teachers look like they're idiots, right? Anybody that's in any type of authority, they, they don't know nothing. Sounds like some of, the scene we, some of the stuff we see when it's time to vote, isn't it? Man, don't get me started. But I'm just saying, but they've been feeding on that. So they watch that, and they come to school when they want to try to do that. But then, when you take them to the office many times, we don't want to mark on what's going on, so we just wait, you know, don't do that no more. Oh, oh. Let me tell you what, I was, when I did get caught, I ain't going to say when I messed up, when I did get caught and I went to the office, I wanted to settle my case right there. I did not want it to spill over to a phone call. And I did not want dear old dad to come up there. Because I'm going to tell you what, man. All these guys think they all cool with the hat on sideways and everything else. My dad was doing that a long time before then. He had the hat on and be like, oh, what did he do this time? How can I now? What did he do this time? I was like, I'm just sick. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't need to pick me up. I got a toothache, dad. Come on. But he didn't play like that. Because... I can remember my dad one time in one of my famous stunts as we got back home and, and he was trying to make it a teachable lesson when the swelling went down. Uh, I do remember this. I do remember this. He says, son, all you got is your name and your word. He said, and I know it doesn't mean much to you. He said, but you're representing your whole family. So think about some of the stuff before you do it. What were you thinking? I go, I wasn't. But that still lives on. Isn't that something? Yesterday was eight years since my dad went to go home with the Lord. Let me tell you, I am not sad in that aspect. I am happy to know that I will see him again. And that's what we have in any believer's life. And I'm going to tell you what. Dad, enjoy. Because I'm coming to see you. I don't know when. But, uh. When we do, I don't want nobody slinging, slinging no tears at me to be like, "Woo, he made it. He made it. Let's keep on going. He tries to keep you from God's word. Oh, man. Look at this. If you had this sitting on your table at the house, oh, you walk by that thing. Yeah. Oh, you walk back by that thing. What would happen if that thing just had to follow you around? You'd be like, hey, 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 hey. Well, now, we should be going this way with it. Man. That's the living word of God. It's not going to change, but it'll change your life, and it'll change your life for the good. 
That's why we need to. Why do you think he wants to keep you from it? That's why. Have you ever done this? You get ready to read your Bible. Get ready to do a devotion. Ding dong. Who is that? Okay, you answer the door. Pizza man, wrong house. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read this. You start reading the scripture. Telephone ringing. You know what happens when that happens at my house? You think I answer it? You know I do. Because if it's a telephone marketer, then I just tell them about Jesus. I said, hey, how y'all doing? He said, we've got a deal for you. I said, you go first, but I got one better. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He turned around and said, hey, well, we got the two days and three nights and all this. I said, I got all eternity, man, with Jesus. What you got? Time that. <laughs> and Denise is like, get off the phone. What is he doing on there? Dad's talking to a telemarketer again. <laughs> hey, if they're going to take my time, I'm going to share a little Jesus, right? It's amazing. Well, we're on a recorded line. Good. Turn it up. Hey, can I talk to your manager? Check it out next time. Do either get them on the line, you can share Jesus, or they hang up. It's a win-win, really. You know what I mean? It's a win-win. I'm not too busy. Man, I said, man, Lord, I need to share some Jesus. Bling. Do y'all know, y'all know, do y'all know about Jesus? Oh, man. Now, here's something else the enemy will try to do. He tries to overwhelm you with worry and fear. Man. I say this, you can write it down. I ought to get a t-shirt with this on it. I've never met anybody that worried a problem to a solution. Can't do it. I'd like to say that I don't worry. I try not to worry. This helps me from worrying right here. Reading this and knowing, again, my identity in Christ, whose I am because of what Jesus Christ has done. But I'm going to tell you what, when you walk through things like that, we, we've got to continue to go back to the word. I know I hit you with some one-liners here, but I, I guarantee you there's at least 25 things you can write down. How about that? He's the accuser. You ever been at work and something go wrong? And you know it's your fault. And before you can even say, uh, yeah, I didn't shut that off or I didn't turn that on, somebody goes, it was you. I don't need that. <laughs> right? See, a lot of times, people will try to put you down and make themselves look better. They'll do it. I don't know why that is. We call it what? Throwing you under the bus. At work we go, boop, boop, look out, he's coming. He's coming. Some of the best people I've ever worked for told me this. If we got a problem, please tell me early. So we can make some adjustments. Don't let it sit. Because it won't get better. You know. So what I try to do, I try to do what I can on my level. And then, and then I go, uh, you got a minute? You got a minute? <laughs> Sit down. But see, here's the thing. God knows everything, and he's always got a minute. He's got an hour. He's got a second. He's got a day. He's got all eternity. And he's willing for us to come boldly to the throne of grace. We're going to hear more about that. So don't get wrapped around that. Here's something else. He wants to point to the quick fix. Woo, we like to settle up, don't we? Well, if I just do this, if I just shuffle this, what about David? Remember old David, right, in the Bible? Had that adulterous affair. The lady gets pregnant. He goes, uh-oh, this ain't good. And the enemy says, I got a quick fix for you. We're going to take, take out her husband. So he calls for her husband. He's out fighting battles where David should have been out there. He'd be in a peeping Dave looking around the top of the roof. Bible's interesting. Bible's interesting. And he sends him home and says, hey, man, why don't you come on home and spend some time with your wife and everything. Everything's good, right? He's going to sling the monkey, right? Turns around, and the guy says, well, I appreciate that, but uh, I can't stay. Not with my men in battle. He went down to the gates and stayed there overnight. David's going, man, what am I going to do? This thing's closing in on me. i got to have the quick fix. So he writes a note and basically tells him, take this to him. Take this to their husband. Turn around. And it basically is his own death warrant. I want him out front. I want him leading the, leading the pack into this whole battlefield. Then I want you guys to step back. That would be called a setup. Right? And time went by and time went by. And the prophet comes by and says, he starts sharing about different things. and says, well, you know what? I know about this guy that had all these sheep, but he took this one man's sheep. And all this, I won't get into preaching the whole thing. Y'all know most of the story. But anyway, God sent a prophet, I believe it was Nathaniel, and put his finger right on the pulse where he said, 
I often wonder if this is where this has come from. David says, who is that guy? Who would do such a thing like that? Who in the world would do such a thing like that? And he goes, you the man. Eee! I bet you that record stopped in the, in the castle. Do, 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 do. You the man. Was, somebody, people said, buddy, you the man. I said, I don't want to be the man. <laughs> I know the man. <laughs> I'm just the man working for the man. But isn't that something? A lot of times we try to do the quick fix. And over and over and over, God points us back. If you just do it my way, it'll be okay. Lastly on this here, he entices you to serve self and not God. Boy, we could preach on that all day. All day long. How often do we hear, well, what about me? Well, how's that going to affect me? You ever read anything in the Bible where Jesus says, oh, what about me? He says that I'm the truth, the way, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. But he's telling you that for our own benefit, right? Well, I don't like that. I don't feel like that. I don't think it should be that way. How many people have thought things should be a certain way, and then when you get all the information, it wasn't even close to what you thought it was going to be? It's good to get the whole picture. Let me give you the whole picture. The whole picture of God is found in this word. The whole picture of God is found through the Son of Jesus Christ. We need to follow. We need to walk, walk, learn, live. Now y'all ready for some good news? I give you all the bad news, right? Let's keep on going. Let's see what else the Lord's got for us. We got to get the proper perspective on life. If you got the wrong perspective, you got the wrong. You just got the wrong, wrong deal. Look at this. What God says goes. See, God's got it. What God says goes. Amen. Look at this. We are accepted in Christ. I said, it's difficult circumstances, man, in this world can rock us and everything else. But have you ever found yourself in a tough situation somewhere in life? Maybe it's a job, maybe it's finance, maybe it's a loss, whatever. But there's things in this world, there's people in this world, there's family in this world that will start trying to chip away at your identity. Stand strong, be encouraged. Put things in proper perspective. I want to blow through these things right now. I think it'll help you, okay? Got the, got the scripture on here and I just kind of gave it the overview. If you look at this. John 1, 12 says, I'm a child of God. Yeah. One thing when I start coming out to, to date Denise out here, and y'all probably don't understand this because most of y'all have been here in Bacosan. When I'd go to, to uh, Jimmy's mama's house, Granny's house, she's like, who's your mama and your daddy? Who's your daddy? <laughs> she wanted to know the background. And then Thomas dated a girl from Hampton. Oh, Lord. Granny was praying. Right? <laughs> She's outside the circle. She's outside the circle. But we love to write on into it. But it's funny, though, sometimes, you know. Well, I don't know her folks. I don't, I don't, I don't. What's her story? See, because she wanted to make sure her babies were going to be safe. She wanted the backstory. She wanted to know what's going on. So as a child of God, when we know who your dad is, who your father is, you can say, who's your dad? Oh, man, who's my dad? Let me tell you about my dad. He created a universe. Let me tell you about my dad. He, he, he loved me so much that, that he came and, and, and died for me. You know what? Let me tell you about my dad. He separated all my sin. He paid my sin debt in full. Let me tell you about my dad, that he loves me so much that he wants me to tell you how good he is. And you know what? He'll be a father to you, too. Woo, now that starts changing things. Let me get a little swig here. Because I'm probably going to cry. I know we got family in here that have lost some family. And I'll just share something. Like I just said, my dad, it's been eight years since my dad passed away. And I remember going to church the first day after my dad passed. And I pulled up at the church. I'm getting ready to go in to preach. And I said, talking to guys, I said, Man, this is the first time my dad's never been here. And the Lord said, you'll never be fatherless with me. Man, I was ready to preach that day. Woo, we're hot. And we're going to keep on going. So yes, we miss them when they're gone, but I'm going to tell you what. My goodness, God is so good if we would listen and lean into his voice. Look at this. I've been justified. Now, when I say I, I want you to make that your I, not me. 
us, we, but we got to make it perfect. I've been justified just as if I've never sinned, man. How about that? Look at this. First Corinthians 6, 20 says this. I've been bought with a price and I belong to God. Man, whose are you? Man. See, that's what I want to know what God says about it. When I talk to people, they say, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And I tell them when they get ready to get married, I said, I want to give you the very best that I can. And the very best that I can give you is let's spend some time and see what God says about it. Not what Buddy says about it, what God says about it. And then we build from that and build on that platform of grace and mercy and, and the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this. Keep on rolling here. I have direct access to God through the Holy Spirit. Man, never get a wrong number. Straight to the throne of God. Man, you know what that tells me? Favor. God sees your best on your worst day. Man, isn't that something? You know, people call me and I try to get all the phone calls I can and, and everything like that. But I'm going to tell you, now, now if my kids call me, I'm grabbing that phone. If I'm at work or whatever, what, I was like, I got, I, excuse me, I got to check on this. Them are my babies. I told Thomas today, he's going to be 28 years old. I said, all right, baby, let's go. I said, don't get to, I won't call you baby until you're 50. <laughs> you know what I mean? He says, it's all right, pop, whatever. But that's my baby. You know, they're my babies. And I love them and I want the best for them. How much more? Because I'm not even have the capability to love as much as God. I'm trying. God's working in my life. But how much more does God love us? How much more? He sees the whole picture, man. He sees the whole deal. He wants the best for you. He's not chasing after you to knock you down. He's opening his arm for you to run to him to lift you up. I thought somebody might be excited about that. I know I am. Because I'm going to tell you what, to know that I got total access to God. And you know what hurts my heart? As many times, he's the last one I call. I'm just being honest. Come on now. Am I just preaching to me or what? Sometimes I'm, I'm the last one to call. Yeah, I'll be the last one. Well, I'm going to try to fix it. And let's do this again. And let's try to fix this. And let's work on this. And if I do this, and if I manipulate this, and I call this person, and I got a favor, and all this stuff. But I just said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know when I've seen God work, the, when I've seen him work the best in my life, is when I just cry out, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. Amen. You got to fix it. I don't know the answer. I can't fix it. Lord, you got to touch it. You got to fix it. Help me to listen. Help me to get out of the way. Tell me what to do, Lord. Help me. Give me the strength. Then, Lord, give me the strength to obey what you give me to do. Because sometimes we get a little hard-headed. Amen? Amen? Man, look at this. I've been redeemed and forgiven. Every time I think about being redeemed, I think about going to Belo's on my bicycle down there on Pembroke Avenue. And you buy a few things and they give you those little green, what were they, H and H? That's it, the stamps. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you could go up there and spend like, I don't know, a fortune, like a million and a half dollars. And they give you a book of them, right? And then you can go get a flat basketball. So, like, yeah, it's kind of like Chuck E. Cheese. I never forget, we was over there doing the ski ball and all this. Got all the Chuck E. Cheese things. They're coming out there. My boys got all these. They come up there. What do you want? What do you want? They're going back and forth, the ladies up there. Oh, Lord, please. I know, because everybody, it's a big decision. You can have this, this, and this, and this. And my son, Jesse, looked at me and goes, Dad, I'd like that. I said, you deserve it, son. We'll take the whoopee cushion. <laughs> And the lady said, you must be so proud. I said, that's my boy. <laughs> you can buy 10 of them for a dollar, but it cost us about $72.50. <laughs> but we were bonding. We had a good time, man. We were living it up. Whew. So we redeemed our ticket and got that. Let me tell you what. Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That means we've been set from under the law, set in grace, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, that we have access to our heavenly father because of what Jesus Christ has done. Somebody say amen. That is the story. That's the deal. That's the whole nutshell. But will you walk in it? Will you turn around? We've got to have the proper perspective. And you know what? Since you've been forgiven, how much more should you forgive other people? I didn't say get walked on. I didn't say get, get trampled on. But you know what? Lord, help us to show grace to others. Lord, help us to show mercy to others. It's going to take him to help us do that. It's going to take Holy Spirit working in us to get us through. It's going to take him to, to nudge us. 
I, I've shared this, and, and I see some different faces. I'll share it again. I remember one time when Tom Thomas was like, oh, gosh, not me again. When he was little, and I said, Tom, don't do this, whatever it was. Don't even remember what it was. Good thing. God, God washed it over. <laughs> and he did this thing. And I was so mad because I told him, don't do this thing. And he did. I was like, I cannot believe. Dude, we just talked about this. I mean, the lip. My boys always said, well, Dad, man, you know what, man? You know, didn't I tell you that, man? <laughs> Jesse could do it better, but he's not here today. <laughs> so I get there and I go, dude, I told you. Do you understand? Do you know why? I want to make it a teachable moment. You know why I told you not to do it? Because this, 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 and everything. And I was getting ready to wear him out right on his hind parts. And I had my hand back there and the Lord said, is that how I deal with you? And I fell down, start crying. He goes, Thomas is going. <laughs> Are we good? <laughs> and I just said, man, I just love you. He's like, what just happened? <laughs> he got to see grace unfold right there. I'm crying. He's going, Ma! <laughs> Ma! Because <laughs> he's like, this is not good. Pops a snap, man. But the, I heard the voice of the Lord in my spirit just say, is that how I deal with you? And I go, son, it just hurts my heart. I just want the best for you. Isn't that what it is? And God wants his best for us. We're forgiven, man. Pass it on. Look at this. I'm complete in Christ. You know what? We're always trying to get completed, right? We think it's somebody else. The relationship's going to make us complete. If we just get this much in our 401k. I worked with a young guy, and he was telling me numbers. I was like, what? We're walking and stuff. He says, yeah, I'm thinking about our retirement. He's like 30 years old. He says, yeah, well, once I get like, uh, I don't know, I'm thinking like $4 million in the bank or something like that, I'll go ahead and retire. I need your job. That's what I'm thinking. You know? And I'm thinking, wow. So it's not always a number. You know, we got, we got to get to this point. The 401k's got to be this. The, the IRA's got to be this. And once the house is paid for, it wants, I think it's great to have a plan. I think it's great to do that. But that's not going to make you complete. You know what I found? I'll just tell you this sitting down with a lot of families, people pass. People will do everything, and I think it's great if you get your house paid for. This is not a seminar on, on finance or nothing like that. But I've seen people work and sacrifice their family and have the house paid for, get sick. All the money is locked in to the house. They have no money in the savings. Now they got to mortgage the house to get taken care of, and now everything's upside down. And they still check out, and they've never invested in their family. Man, don't miss time to, to be a blessing to your family. Don't miss time because we're fully equipped. I know I got a lot of little points in here. I'm going to keep on moving. Going to bring it home now. Everybody doing good? We are fully equipped. I'm going to unfold some of these and I'll preach through them. That way you have time to copy down some of these, okay? Take a look at this. Matthew 5, 13, 14. It says, I'm the salt and the light. This is who we are. You can write this in your note. This is who I am in Christ. This is who I am because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. Let's take a look at this. I am the salt and the light. That means we're difference makers, amen? We are the difference maker. I've been chosen and appointed to bear fruit. God is counting on you to bear fruit. Think about that. He's equipped us so that we bear fruit. That, what does that mean? Bear fruit? That he wants us to, to, to be in a place where we are sharing and doing things that bring people to the kingdom of God. Now think about that. How often do you think in the morning, so we want, Lord, what do you want me to do to expand the kingdom? Do you think about that? Lord, I just got paid. How do you want me to spend my money? Oh, matter of fact, Lord, it's all your money. I'm just a steward to it. How would you like me to do that? Lord, you know what? You gave me breath today. How would you like me to work and serve you today? Lord, who is it that you want me to call today? Lord, who is it that you want me to uh, love on today? I guarantee you, if we just listen, we'd be amazed. Take a look at this. I'm a personal witness for Christ. It made me think about my dad when I was saying, he said, look, you're representing the whole family. Well, let's go a little bit bigger. We are representing God. And some days we do better than others. How will I represent him today? That does not mean your life is going to be perfect, but we're being made perfect. We're being formed into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, a step at a time, a choice at a time. A choice at a time. Let's keep on rolling with that. 
I'm God's temple. Man, do you ever think about that? Holy Spirit lives in you. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and you've put your faith and trust in the finished work of the cross, you've turned from your sin, you've asked the Lord to forgive you and come into your life. I'm not talking about mumbling words. I'm talking about getting right with God and say, Lord, I need you. And I believe you're the son of God. And I need you to take my sin away, Lord. Today, fill my life. Help me walk this out. He says, you know what? He'll dwell with us. That's that little nudge when you're doing something you know you're not supposed to do. And he goes, hey. And we just turn the volume up and keep on walking. When you get ready to answer real fast, that's that little thing that's got to break on your jawbone going, Holy Spirit's like, hey, hey. And you go, shift gears. But I think it happens because we're still dealing with this stuff here, man. That old flesh. But I'm going to tell you what, God is in a refining business in our life. But here's the truth about the whole deal. He's already refined us in the eyes of God. He says, you are set in the family. You are made right with God. Look at this. We are God's temple. I am a minister of reconciliation. Wow. How about that? Would you ever think about that? God has gifted us. A minister means help. Right. To to administer, to minister reconciliation, to tell people the good news, to tell you, say, let me tell you, Jesus loves you. Not to tell you, say, you know what? You really messed up. And not only that, I saw you mess up. And not only that, boy, that's terrible. Wow. We speak the truth. We speak the truth in love. And then through God's presence and the Holy Spirit's presence, we turn around and God shows us how we can come alongside and help others. Not fix others, not point out all the problems, but to be there for them and point them to Jesus and allow him to do that. That's pretty amazing if you ask me. Man, a front row seat. Now, how many people feel like this? I'm God's masterpiece. When you woke up this morning and your hair looked like a chicken, did you feel like God's masterpiece? (laughs) Denise has got this jewelry box and it's got a mirror on there. And I thought, that's got to be one of those funhouse mirrors. Because I keep getting shorter and fatter every time I get out of bed, man. I'm like, what is going on with that thing? Let's turn that thing, man. Goodness gracious. But then she walks by and says, well, it's fixed again. It looks good. Man, I get out there, I was like, ooh. But you know what? We're God's masterpiece. In the eyes of God, there is nothing more precious, nothing more amazing than you and you and you and you and you. Did you know you're God's favorite? He just has a bunch of them, right? He really does. Man, he got more than one favorite, right? He's got a bunch of them. And look at this. As we bring this down, God tells us, we're not doing this on our own. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, today we covered a lot of ground. And and I, I, I pray that you guys are encouraged with this. Because I tell you what, life has a way of working you over. But God has a way of lifting you up. God has a way of filling you up. I've had a pretty busy schedule the last few weeks. That's cool. People say, I'm praying for you, man. I know you're a little tired. And I told a friend of mine last night, I said, it's okay because, man, when I get into this thing right here, it's like shucking years off my life. I'm like, man, this is who I am. I was back there eating a ham biscuit last night, working on a few things. I said, man, this is going to be awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait. I want to tell everybody what God's showing me here. We're fully equipped. Look at this. We're the salt and the light. We're chosen. We're appointed. We're to bear fruit. Look at all this stuff, man. We're, we're a personal witness for Christ. We're God's temple. We're, we're ministers of re- uh, re- uh, reconciliation. <laughs> How you like that one? God's masterpiece. And we can do all things through Christ except talk fast. But I tell you what, isn't it amazing? Even in the midst of stuff, even in our craziness, God says, you know what, I'll still use you. I'll still use you. Let me tell you, this is going to help somebody here today. If you think you've got to wait to be used by God to have it all figured out, you bought the lie. You walk with him the best you can today. And you keep leading into him each and every day. And God is faithful, and he will take you right where you are, and he will work in your life. Let me tell you, friends, I pray that you're encouraged. We are accepted in Christ, we are secure in Christ, and you are significant in Christ. Let us pray. Lord, I praise you today that you're not done with us yet. Although all the work is done, 
on the cross and it's finished. And we are your masterpiece. And we are justified through you. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you continue to show us your grace and your mercy each and every day. And so, Father, I, I pray if there's someone listening here today, whether they're here or whether they're online or they listen months and weeks later, this doesn't change. You're an unchanging God that loves us so much. So, Father, I ask you today, if there's one here that does not know you as Lord and Savior, Take this message and put it in their heart, Lord, that they will come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care if they've sat in church for 30 years. I don't care if it's the first time they walked in the door. Lord, help this message to touch their life so that they will know the grace and the love of God through Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters here today and those that are online and people that will be listening later. Lord, that you would touch their lives in a way through today's message, through all those scriptures through the gospel message, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here today, friend, and you've never put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, please today, don't leave here without him. Please, I'm begging you, please. Eternity's a long, long time. And don't ever think that you're too far gone. Salvation is on the tip of your tongue in the belief of your heart. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. I've been saying this for months and years and everything else. I'm not talking about mumbling words, friends. I'm talking about asking God from your heart to come into your life and forgive you of your sin. Your job can't pay for your sin debt. Your looks don't pay for your sin debt. Your position don't pay for your sin debt. It took the blood of Jesus Christ to be shed on the cross and for him to die and be rose again and when you put your faith connected with Christ, he says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If that's you today, let us know so we can pray with you. If that's you today and you're listening, send us a note. Send us something we want to pray for you. God is good and we're for God. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Give the Lord a hand clap.